let's talk about fitting the data from the collisions in the Momentum Lab. If you haven't watched the first video in this series, you can do so at this link. Once you've done that, come back to this video. To make the data a little easier to fit, you can see that I've now plotted the green cart's position and velocity data on the same graph. I've done the same for the yellow cart. The data files available in the lab folder are both set up this way. For each cart, the position data is plotted as a series of connected dots. The velocity data is plotted as a series of connected triangles. Because the velocity data is calculated from the position data, we are going to use the position data for our analysis. The position data is the raw data that we collected. We generally want to use the most basic data when we analyze experiments. As I mentioned in the previous video, we are interested in finding the velocity of each cart just before and just after the collision. Remember, the carts didn't actually touch each other. The magnets in each cart produced a nearly perfect elastic collision. Since they didn't actually touch, I may occasionally call this an interaction rather than a collision. Before and after the collision interaction, each cart is either stationary or moving at a nearly constant speed. We want to make sure that when we find the velocity, we only use the data from when the cart is not accelerating. The carts accelerate when they are first pushed, while they are interacting, and again when they are stopped at the end of the experiment. We want to fit the data where each cart is moving at a constant speed just before the collision. In the green cart's data, you can see the time when it was initially standing still, from 0 seconds to about 0.5 seconds. While I push to get it moving, you can see that the velocity changes. This occurs between 0.05 seconds and about 1.1 seconds. It is hard to see this acceleration in the position data. That's why we use the velocity data as a guide to fit the position data. After the push, there is a short amount of time where the green card is moving freely. This is the region that we want to fit. Just before 2.0 seconds, the carts start to interact. This is where we want to end our fitting region. To fit a region of data, place your mouse near the time that you want to start the fit. Press and hold the left mouse button and drag to the right. This will highlight the area that will be fit. Once you've reached the end of the region to be analyzed, let go of the left mouse button. You will now see that the fitting region is highlighted. The starting and ending times are shown in the small boxes below the fit. Notice that I avoid the curved parts of the velocity data. It would be very difficult to determine where the acceleration is occurring if we only looked at the position data. It is a little bit of a judgment call to, as to exactly what times you should start and end the fit. You can fine tune your fitting region by moving the boxes for the starting and ending times. This is done by placing your mouse over the box, holding down the left mouse button, and dragging it left or right. Once the region is selected, click on the button with the icon that looks like a small graph. It is located to the lower left side of the graph that we are looking at. Once you click, a menu will appear with several options. Choose the option of Apply Curve Fit. In the small window that opens up, you'll see a drop-down menu that offers several fitting equations. Since this data is linear, choose the linear curve. Notice that the two lines have been added to the graph. These run through and extend beyond the selected area. Click the Apply button to apply the fit. Once you click on the button, a new window will appear that has the fit for both the position and the velocity data. The top set of data should be the position data, but check the color code to make sure of which data is which. Move this information window to the side so that you can see both it and the region that you fit. For the pre-collision data, I'd recommend that you move it to the left. We have three other regions to fit. The procedure for each will be very similar to how we fit the initial data. For the yellow cart, we move to the lower graph. It is a good idea to use the same time range to analyze this data. You can see the time range, which is listed as X range in the fitting window for the green cart. Select this region in the yellow cart's graph and fit the data. For the post-collision data, follow a similar process. For the first set of collision data, I'd recommend that you follow the yellow cart's data first, then use the same time range to fit the green cart's data. Notice that the yellow cart does seem to slow down a bit. Use a short time at the beginning of the period after interaction rather than the entire time. After fitting these four regions, you'll be ready to use the fitting parameters. These fitting parameters will determine the speeds of each cart before and after the collision. We'll discuss how to do this in the next video.